In today's lesson, we're gonna go over some great concepts to help improve your phrasing. I'm also gonna show you a template you can use to help give your solos more structure. My name is Jack Roosh, welcome to my channel. Let's get into it. about the rhythmic placement of our notes. And one of the most important things to keep in mind here is space. Where we leave spaces in our lines is what's gonna give our phrasing the right feel. And it's also gonna give the notes we do play much more impact. So I'll demonstrate this now by playing a similar lick over an A minor vamp. The notes of the lick will stay the same, but I'll put spaces in different parts of the line to change the phrasing. So another thing to keep in mind is rhythmically where we start and stop our phrases. Uh, by starting on different parts of the beat or different parts of the measure, we can add syncopation to our phrasing. So here I'm gonna play the exact same lick, but I'm gonna start on different subdivisions of the beat. So the third thing that I think about is rhythmic subdivisions. Uh, by changing the rhythmic subdivisions from 16th notes to 8th notes to triplets, we can really alter the phrasing drastically. Here I'll play the same line but change between three different rhythmic subdivisions. <laughs> gone over some basic concepts for phrasing, let me show you how we can use some of these ideas in a solo, as well as a few basic things to keep in mind when you're structuring a solo. So for this, we're going to play a minor blues in the key of A minor, and we're going to start out by playing a rhythmic pickup into the form. So our first phrase is actually going to start one beat before the downbeat of the first measure, um, and this is going to kind of set up the form. So here's the first two measures of our uh, minor blues solo. Okay, so now that we've played these two licks in the first two measures of our solo, we can repeat these phrases but use some of the concepts we discussed earlier to change up the phrasing. Uh, for this first lick, instead of just playing straight 16th notes, I'm going to use eighth note triplet subdivisions uh, to change up the phrasing. And then for the second lick, um, I'm just going to add a space in there um, so that it's still familiar, um, but rhythmically a little bit more interesting. <laughs> basically just played the same two licks but repeated them and made a few changes to the phrasing. This is a huge part of structuring solos. Um, with repetition we can create these little motifs that make solos much more musical and much more memorable. So I'm going to continue this idea throughout the rest of the form and every time we come back to the A minor I'm going to go back to that original motif. <laughs> Okay, 
invitation for the complete solo will be available up on my Patreon page as well as the backing track. And uh, I'm really excited to announce I've got a new course out. It just came out. It's called The Player's Perspective, and it covers a lot of uh, really important concepts that I use every day in my playing. So I'll put the link to that down in the description. Please go check that out. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I will catch you guys next time. Happy practicing.